Today, our presenter is Ari Carvalho Mires. Ari is a practicing physician therapist at Reactive Therapy and Wellness in West LA. Ari is passionate about serving people with neurologic, sorry, yes, neurologic conditions and works with clients to develop individualized and creative treatments to reach their goals. She has a bachelor's degree in exercise physiology from Chico State and a doctorate in physical therapy from USC. When she's not in the clinic, you're most likely to find Ari outside on a hike, working in her garden, or trying out a new hobby. Thank you, Ari, for joining us today. Hi, everybody. It's so good to be here. Um, so I'm gonna be sharing my screen with you all to start our presentation here. So can I get a thumbs up if you guys can see that? Perfect, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So good morning, everybody. It's uh, so great to be here today. Thank you all for joining me. And the way that Zoom works, I can only see a couple of you at the top. So, so I'll be counting on, on you few people to, to let me know if, if anything is going on in the screen. Um, so I'm, I'm so excited to be here to lead this discussion about a topic of growing importance in people with Parkinson's, which is exercise as medicine. So as Joe said, my name is Ari and I'm a neurologic PT at a private practice in West LA called Reactive Therapy and Wellness. We offer physical therapy, occupational therapy, neuropsychology, personal training, and group exercise classes. So a whole, whole slew of options when you come to our clinic. Um, I have the privilege of being able to work with all of our various disciplines to really help offer comprehensive care to our clients. Currently, I am completing Reactive's Movement Disorders Fellowship, which allows me to also work with the Movement Disorder Neurology team at UCLA uh, to learn more more about the medical management of Parkinson's. So I'm really excited to be here with you guys today to discuss the importance of exercising with Parkinson's disease and all of the amazing benefits that it can provide you. So for today's agenda, we're starting with the presentation. So I'm gonna be going through a presentation discussing the benefits of exercise, the different types of exercise. And then we're also gonna discuss, uh, or we're gonna get up and do a demonstration kind of going through some of those specific exercises that we'll talk about today. And then at the end, we'll open up the room for some questions and answers that any of you guys might have. Okay, so why exercise? So we've all probably heard about many of the wonderful benefits of exercise, such as improved strength and endurance, improved balance and reduction of falls, improving sleep, decreasing stiffness, decreasing and preventing depression. But if all of those reasons weren't already enough, uh, I would suggest that the number one reason is the potential of exercise to actually slow the progression of Parkinson's disease through something called neuroplasticity. So neuroplasticity is a really big word that you might actually have heard a few times maybe from your neurologist or just in the neurologic world, but it essentially means that this is the ability for the networks in our brain to grow and change by making new connections and by remapping. And neuroplasticity is essentially how we learn a new skill. And this could be any skill, okay? So, so how does this work? So this, this part of things are gonna get a little bit technical, but I'll, I'll try to make it as, as simple as possible. And of course, if you have any questions, just let me know. So I, I love using this figure to help explain how exercise can affect the brain and our overall function. So specifically in people with Parkinson's disease. And overall, the, the big picture summary is that clinical and scientific research really support the effect of exercise on creating brain change, okay? So when we look at the top of this figure, you'll see the word exercise in blue. And so we know that goal-directed and aerobic exercise both strengthen and improve the motor circuits in our brain. So the motor circuits in the brain are what are responsible for our movement, okay? And this is basically done through mechanisms that include, but aren't limited to 
some changes in the way that dopamine is actually transmitted in the brain. And there are also actual structural changes of the synapses in our brain. So the synapses are basically kind of where our nerves connect to one another to signal things and to make things happen. And exercise can also actually provide neuroprotection of the substantia nigra neurons. So the substantia nigra is where dopamine lives, right? And we all know how important dopamine is when it comes to Parkinson's disease. So exercise can actually help to protect those neurons and the dopamine that you already have available in your brain. So that's really exciting and huge, huge, huge. So we can also, exercise can also promote um, improved blood flow and general brain health, which really can provide optimal conditions for positive brain change. And this is so important for facilitating motor skill learning to, you know, including our automatic motor control and just our overall movement performance. So while more studies are clearly needed, right, we always wanna get more research in this area, taken together, the current research findings are really supportive of exercise providing a disease modifying effect, right? A disease modifying effect in neurologic disorders such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. This is really, really exciting when it comes to the research. It's really great. So, so what type of exercise has been studied? What type of exercise should you be doing? So the first one we're gonna talk about is called skilled training, okay, skilled exercise. So what is this? So skilled training is essentially something that, where you have a specific goal, such as improving coordination, improving dual tasks, so improving being able to do two things at once. That's kind of an example of skilled training. So I personally utilize skilled training for a variety of different reasons when it comes to my clients. Uh, I'll give you an example. So when, when I have a patient that comes to me and is wanting to work on improving their ability to walk while also doing something else, so a dual task, so like walking and texting, walking and talking to their spouse or friend that they're walking with, uh, even walking and being able to look around at the environment you're, that you're walking in. So we know that in Parkinson's, doing something like this, walking, talking, walking and doing a different task can be difficult while also being able to maintain a good walking quality, right? So still being able to maintain taking large steps being able to maintain swinging your arms and not reverting to smaller step length or shuffling of gait while you're trying to talk to somebody else. Okay, so what I usually do when someone comes to me with that, that type of specific, um, specific concern, I use dual, dual training. So I have them, you know, let's practice walking and we're actually gonna practice this later today. So let's pr practice walking and see how you do without any, anything added to it. And then when that looks really good, we're gonna add something to it, right? I'm gonna have you name fruits and vegetables while you're walking. I know it sounds very abstract, but you can also name anything from a category that you like. Um, or have them you know, hold an object and throw an object in the air and catch it, pass an object around their back while they're walking and see what happens to your walking quality while your brain is now having to think about something else too, like a, you know, naming things or, or the object that you're holding in your hand. So that's a really good example of a way that you, that we, I utilize skilled training quite a bit actually. So there's a couple of videos here that if you turn your attention. So in this, the bottom left-hand corner here is one of our clients that is walking through a ladder and tossing a scarf up and down as she's walking. So this is an example of a dual task because she's having to now focus on her steps, getting through this ladder and also focus on throwing this object up and down while she's walking. And this other video here on the right is an example of <laughs> someone performing boxing punches, right? So they're counting out the numbers and performing the punches so this can be utilized for, to improve coordination. It can be used to improve the range of motion that you're able to get it with your spine, right? Your rotation. 
And it can also be used to remember having to memorize sequences, which is also a really important piece. So that this is these are examples of some skilled training. So the next type of exercise we're going to talk about here is aerobic exercise. Um, so aerobic exercise, there's a lot of different types. I feel like this is like one of the largest categories when it comes to exercise, because honestly, anything can be aerobic as long as you're getting your heart rate up. So if it is, if you feel yourself, I'm breathing heavy, wow, I'm working really hard, it is very likely you're doing some type of aerobic exercise. Some examples for you though, of things that we typically think of as aerobic would be swimming, biking, running, walking, dancing, but, but really, again, anything could, could qualify for that. An aerobic exercise is a great way to prime our brain for positive changes. So as we mentioned in that earlier slide where we had that really complex figure, aerobic exercise can really help improve blood flow and can help improve our brain health. So I use aerobic exercise a lot at the beginning of my sessions with my clients to do exactly that. Let's get blood flow, let's get your brain ready for the positive changes that we're gonna make in our session together. So it's a really great way to, if you're gonna do some skilled training, to kind of prime with some aerobic exercise to basically get your brain in a good position for those positive changes, really set yourself up for it. And where I often see aerobic training to also be really helpful with my clients is specifically when they're wanting to walk longer distances, they're wanting to improve their endurance, maybe even improving some of the stiffness that you might feel. Aerobic exercise can be really helpful for all of those areas. And in these two videos, you're going to see one of our clients performing jump roping and then also running on the treadmill. So she's doing so awesome. And I apologize because you're going to hear one of our other therapists woohoo, screaming in the background. <laughs> Just so you know, that's going to come up if you can hear that. <laughs> so jump roping. And then here's one of our other clients running on the treadmill. <laughs> so some awesome videos of some of our clients that are just doing so well. And the last type of exercise I'm going to discuss is resistance exercise. So I think when people often think of resistance exercise, they think of strength training. So weightlifting, using dumbbells, resistance can also be using body weight. So doing things like squats, push-ups, pull-ups, those types of things are all going to be in the resistance category. So I often see resistance or strength training <clears throat> to be helpful with my clients when they're wanting to improve being able to get off of a low surface. I feel like everyone has that really low couch in their house that is like the hardest surface to get up from. And that's a really common goal that I hear a lot is, man, I'd really like to be able to get off this couch. And so resistance training can be really helpful for something like that. Um, also getting on and off the floor, uh, getting in and out of the car. So all of these movements require a, a certain amount of strength to be able to perform, which is why this is a, a really important piece of, of our exercise pie. And here are a couple examples of, oops, sorry about that, of resistance training. So here's one of our clients performing kind of an inverted push-up or a row, squeezing at the top. This one is primarily used probably for posture would be my guess. This isn't my personal patient, but this is a great postural exercise, working on strengthening this back part of the body, right? To get that nice and upright position. Yeah, and also squeezing the glute muscles too, right? Those muscles are so important for being able to facilitate that upright position. And then here you'll see one of our group classes performing some squats in synchronization. <laughs> so really nice. So squats are also a really great way to work on some of that, that aerobic intensity and the resistance at the same time. Um, all of these videos were pre-COVID as well. I'm sure you could figure that out, <laughs> but um, it was really, really fun. So, so this is, you know, what should you look for in an exercise program? This is 
one of the quotes from one of our clients uh, that was is in our wellness program. And, and she said, today, I feel like I don't have Parkinson's. So I feel like this is just such such a powerful quote. And I mean, what if your exercise program made you feel like this? Right? I think you would do it all the time. <laughs> so it's really awesome, really, really hopeful. So what should you do? How can you get to that point? How can you be that person that is saying, today I feel like I don't have Parkinson's? So first and foremost, it should be fun. Whatever you choose to do, it is so important that you enjoy it. Choose, you know, try a bunch of different things and pick the one that you like the most. Pick the one that you're excited to go back to. That makes a huge difference, right? None of us like doing things that are not very fun and that we don't really care for, right? We're just not gonna make the effort to do it. So if you choose an exercise that you really, really like and something that you enjoy, you're, you're gonna do it. You're gonna be way more likely to do it, okay? And so ideally, you should try and exercise a minimum of three times a week for 45 minutes at a time. Okay, but don't let this scare you. If you're not ready for that, that's okay. You can start with five minutes, right? We're, we are all at different points in our fitness journey and that's okay. If you're not quite ready for 45 minutes, three times a week, you just start with five minutes. Five minutes a day is better than no minutes a day, right? And let's build, your, build that up as your exercise tolerance improves, okay? And it's medicine, right? This whole topic is exercise as medicine. So you need this daily for the rest of your life. So don't underdose it. Work up to the minimum that's required and don't stop there. Try for four times a week. Try for an hour at a time. Exercise every day if that's something that you want to do. The more that you do it, the better. And how can you stay accountable? So let's try and schedule it into your day. Exercising at the same time every day can be a really helpful way to keep yourself accountable and to make sure that it happens. And we're thinking of exercise as medicine, right? So I know you all take your medications at the same time every day, and it's the same thing with exercise. Schedule it in your day. I'm gonna do this at the same time every day. This is my medication that I need to be taking. And that's a good way to think about it, to kind of get yourself motivated to do it. And lastly, try partnering up. If you live with someone, try partnering up with your spouse, with your roommate, with a friend. Try and schedule it, or sorry, a workout partner is, is a great way to help keep you, keeping you accountable, right? It help, really helps to stay accountable. And in my experience, it also makes it a lot more fun uh, because you're there to celebrate your successes with someone else and, and there's someone there to really push you beyond what you thought you might be capable of. So here's a couple examples of some of our classes and everyone doing stuff in more of a, a partnership here. <laughs> I think this was the end of the session, a little cool down. <laughs> and then here's a, also an example of um, a partnership here doing some boxing together. Nice. So it's really a really nice way that you guys, you can partner up with someone to help keep you accountable. Okay, so let's review a little bit. So what are some of the benefits of exercise? So improved thinking and memory, improved heart function, improved walking and balance. And one of the most important things, being able to do the things that you really love for longer, which is huge. And what about if you don't exercise? What does this mean? So the progression of your Parkinson's symptoms might be faster. You might notice that you need to increase your medication use, and you might even notice a decline in your walking and in your balance. And really our clients do say it best. This is another one of our exercise class participants. I don't have symptoms because of the exercise classes. So really powerful, really powerful. So in summary, you can get neuroplastic brain changes with aerobic, resistive, and skill training forms of exercise. You can prevent 
Parkinson's disease progression through exercise. And it's so easy to start, right? Here are four simple ideas that you can try this week. And you can write down your favorite one. You can try all of them. Um, so one, set a goal to walk for a certain amount of minutes each day. And you choose whatever that is, whatever that would be to you. Try an exercise class for variety and for new challenges. Commit to personal training to keep you accountable. Or just get your heart rate up during one activity per day. And this could be something that you're already doing. Just make it a little more intense. So what are your options at Reactive specifically? So we do offer group classes and we do offer personal training, as I mentioned before. We offer memberships and memberships are great because they're, it's a long-term exercise plan, right? It's a prescription for life. You get rewarded for exercising. There's an online community for checking in and for encouragement. You can set goals and achieve them. There's free evaluations every six months to see where you're at and how much you've grown. And we offer, currently we offer membership packages for virtual, live and on-demand group classes. So they're virtual right now. We're not quite in-person yet. Uh, personal training, in-person and virtual as well. And yoga therapy, virtual and in-person as well. And then I also wanted to just mention that we actually have a Parkinson's boot camp coming up that is on April 23rd through 25th. Um, it's from nine to three. And it, it will cover discussions about exercise, nutrition, sleep, and motivation. There are going to be class demonstrations as well through, with boxing, yoga, high intensity intervals, aerobic exercise, Parkinson's specific exercise. And this is a, the three day event and it runs again from nine to three all of those days. And you're, you're kind of up and moving throughout that whole time or you're listening to discussions about things that are, are Parkinson's specific. So that, that's another option. And I, I'll pop that into the chat after, after we're done and we open it up for questions. So you can have that available to you, that handout. And the, these are some quotes and some uh, images from a survey that we did at the end of our last boot camp that our, the par participants completed. And as you can see here, this is asking them since beginning the boot camp, how would they describe the change, if any, in your activity limitations, symptoms, emotions, and overall quality of life related to Parkinson's disease? And you'll be able to see that everyone rated themselves better, ranging from a little bit better to moderately better to better with a definite improvement. So really cool, just from those three days of exercising, they already were feeling better. And these are a couple of quotes too that you guys can read through. Uh, it rejuvenated me, gave me a little boost towards my exercise program. Sometimes you just need a fresh view. Motivation, feelings of community, infos. I like the emphasis on the music. The different exercise was fun. All of the information and presentations were great too. That's just some info from the boot camp itself. Alrighty, I think I've talked long enough. <laughs> so we're gonna get ready to do a, an actual exercise demo. So I'm gonna lead you all through a couple different types of exercise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna open up my gallery view so I can actually see all of you. As fun as it is to just talk to myself, <laughs> it's nice to see some faces. Okay, so for the first um, set of exercises, we're going to do uh, like an aerobic exercise to start as a warm up. So everybody is going to start in standing and we're gonna do our aerobic warm up. And for the other exercises we're gonna do, you're gonna need a couple items that are all easily accessible from your house. So one of those items is gonna be either a set of dumbbells, if you have those available, if you don't have dumbbells, you can grab a couple water bottles. You can grab any item that has a little bit of weight to it. Um, if you're not comfortable lifting anything that has any weight to it, that's totally fine. You don't have to add any weight at all to any of the exercises, just so you know. And then the other item I would like you all to grab would be if you have scarves, you can grab some scarves. If you don't, you can either grab a couple t-shirts from your room or you can grab uh, a pair of socks would actually work as well. So any any of those items. So if you all want to go ahead and grab those, 
if you can. And again, if you don't have those available, that's totally fine. You don't necessarily need them. We can be very flexible here. And I'm just gonna expand my screen. Nice, I see a couple familiar faces in here. So we'll wait for everybody to kind of come back and then we'll go through some of our aerobic exercise. And we'll try to make it fast because I know I might end up going over a little bit on time. But this is also the fun part. <laughs> okay, so everybody's gonna stand up whenever you're ready. And if you've ever attended a reactive exercise class, you might recognize this warm up. <laughs> We're gonna do just a little warm up. We're only gonna go through it one time. So that way we have some time for the other, other activities, okay? Nice. All righty, most people are back from what I can see. Looks good. Okay, and if you come a little bit later, that's okay. You just start in wherever wherever we are, whatever part we're on, okay? So we're gonna start with our arms out like this in a T position, okay? What we're gonna start with is we're gonna do 10 back pumps like this. So kind of a little posture warm up, moving those arms back, okay? So here we go. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now we're gonna bring the arms up and overhead and we're gonna do the same thing. So pumping back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Open those arms up back to a T position. We're gonna rotate, clap those hands together open up in the middle and rotate the other way. Okay, and open up. So here we go. One, open, two, open, three, open, four, open, five, open, six, open, seven, open, eight, open, nine, open, 10, and open. And then the last one, will, or the, the next one we'll do, we got two more. We're gonna do just like this in the video that you saw, that squat where we're coming down and up, like so. Okay, so we're gonna do 10 of those. So here we go, down and up. One, two, down, three, down, four, down, five, down, six, down, seven, down, eight, down, nine, down, 10. And then for the last one we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of rock side to side and reach and we'll do 10 of these. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Nice, okay. Now we're gonna do our, our strength exercise. So everyone grab your, your dumbbells or your weights that you have, any weight or no weight, your choice, whichever, whichever you prefer. And we're gonna start in a seated position. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple different uh, variations that you can try depending on what you feel comfortable with. So the first one would be standing up and then pushing the weights overhead. Let me try to move this so you guys can see me a little bit better. So that's option one. If you have some shoulder limitations and can't really get the weight overhead, I would recommend just keeping it close to your chest like this or standing up and pushing it forward. 
like so. Okay, so those are a couple different options for you depending on what you're comfortable with. And we're gonna do 10 of these, all right? So 10 of these strength exercises. So here we go. Get your weights up in the position that you prefer. We're gonna stand up and push those weights overhead. One, and sit back down. Push to stand. Two, back down. Push to stand. Three, and back down. Push to stand. Four, back down. Push to stand. Five, and back down. Push to stand. Six, and back down. Push to stand. Seven, and back down. You guys are doing great. We got three more. Push to stand. Eight, and back down. Two more. Push to stand. Nine, back down. And one more. Push to stand. Ten, and back down. Nice, nice job, you guys. Okay, we got one more type of exercise we're gonna do, and then we'll, we'll open up the room for questions. I apologize, I'm going over just a little bit. Won't have as much time for questions. Okay, so for the next one, we're gonna do a little bit of walking. Now, if you are not comfortable walking, you can also just do marching in place. Okay, so it just depends on whatever you're comfortable with. So if you are comfortable with walking, what I'd like you to do is choose a specific location from point A, which is where you started. So point A for me would be this blue chair and then choose a specific like stopping location. So for me, point B is gonna be this orange chair right here. And that's my distance. So I'm gonna go from this blue chair to this orange chair. Now you all have a lot more space than I do. I'm in this very tiny room. So if you have a little bit more space, ideally it would be maybe like 20 feet ish. So you can just choose like a stopping point from wherever you are currently. Okay. What I'd like you all to do is from your starting point, I want you to walk to your designated ending point, And I want you to count how many steps it takes you to get there. And don't try to change any piece of your walking. I want you just to walk as you normally would and try and just count how many steps it takes you and keep that number in your head. So go ahead. I'll walk from my point A to point B as well. Nice, you guys look great. Okay, so everybody has that number that it took you, correct? Okay, and if you were doing marching, sorry, I didn't say this before. If you were doing marching, what you can do is just set a timer for 30 seconds and count how many marches you can get in 30 seconds. Sorry about that, I should have said that before. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna do that same thing again. So you, you said how many steps it took, right? You remember that number. And I want to see if you can beat yourself. So for me, it took me six steps. So I'm gonna try to beat that. I'm gonna try to do it in four. So you decide what you think you can do with what number you got. If you had 20, maybe try to do it in 17 steps. So see what, see what you got. And let's see what, let, what you guys do. So let's try and beat yourself. Try and do it in less steps. Nice. It looks great. For those of you that I can see, you guys look great. Nice. Okay. Now, so that looks great. So did you guys beat yourselves? Yeah. All right. Perfect. So now what we're going to do, last piece, we're going to add in one more piece. So grab your scarf or your sock or your shirt or whichever item you grabbed. Now what you're gonna do is as you're walking that same distance, you're gonna pass that object around your back and you're gonna try and see if you can still keep that, that uh, smaller number that you were able to do. So the lower number of the two. Yay! 
You all look great. All righty. That was awesome. So that was a good example of skilled, skilled training. So we are all done and we can open up for questions. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> let me uh, let me share my screen for that just for the for the slide. Thank you all so much. That was so fun. Thank you. Uh, am I still on mute? Um, thank no, you. Not. That was really wonderful. Um, and as a non medical professional, I'd like to add something that I learned that I think supports all the information Ari shared with us, which are the um, anti depression benefits of walking and regular exercise. Something I learned at the beginning of the pandemic that a therapist shared with me was that walking to the best of your ability consistently, and he referenced a minimum of uh, five times a week, has a stronger antidepressant effect than anything he could prescribe. Wow. And that, that has stuck with me. And again, non-medical information, but I have to say that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we have a few minutes left. So I'd like to go over the questions that we received through the chat, and there are two. The first comes from Paulette. Thank you for asking. Ari, what exercise would you recommend for someone that does not walk at all? Yeah, this is a great question. So we actually, one of our classes actually is only in sitting. So you can, act, you can still get a really good aerobic intense exercise actually only in sitting. And even if you, you don't walk, but you're able to stand, you can also do some stuff in standing too while holding on to a countertop, um, or you can stay sitting the whole time and still do a lot of different Parkinson specific exercises. You can do some weight training. Uh, you can also do some more aerobically intense type stuff, but there are a lot of ways to modify exercises that are done in standing to a seated position. And a lot of therapists or personal trainers or classes will do that for you if you ask and say, hey, I, I don't feel comfortable doing these in standing. Is there a different one that I can do in sitting? And often there's there's a way to modify everything. Yeah, wise, great question. Wise words for life. Um, yeah. <laughs> this question comes from Thomas. Thomas um, would like to know, he works out hard, but sometimes he may be overdoing it. The muscles in my legs, specifically on the affected side, get quite sore and seem to tremor more than usual mm -hmm. after exercise. Why might this be happening? That's a really great question. Um, my best answer I would say was, is you might, it may be because you're overdoing it. Um, that's, that's a tough question. That's not something I feel like that commonly happens. Um, but I think it, it definitely could happen where it's like you're pushing it just a little bit too hard and it's over exciting the muscles. Um, and especially with the soreness too. So maybe scaling it back a little bit and then, you know, doing enough to just be a little bit sore, but to not cause like so much soreness that the tremor is worse and that you're not able to do a lot the following day. Um, that's usually what I tell clients is, you know, push, push it hard enough that you're a little bit sore and a little bit tired, but not so hard that you can't, you know, you're out of commission for the next few days. So maybe scaling it back a little bit and then building up at a, maybe a slower rate could potentially help. Thank you, Ari. Here is another question. Um, two questions about related to treadmills. The first is from Paul. How do you feel about using the treadmill in front of the television? That's a great question. So what the research tells us is that aerobic exercise is great. Yes. Aerobic exercise in combination with a skilled training. So something that is more cognitively demanding is actually better. So often when you are doing aerobic intense exercise, trying to challenge yourself a little more in terms of like your cognitive ability. So sometimes watching the TV is kind of mundane. Like it doesn't require us to pay attention, right? It can just be on and we can just be like, da, da, da. we're kind of checking out. That is not as good as if you were walking and you know, going through like a crossword puzzle or something like that, where it's actually challenging your skill level as well. So it's not a bad idea. I would prefer you to walk in front of the TV than not walk at all, but uh, it's better to do a different task than it is to watch the TV. Yeah. And here's our final chat box question. Does walking on a treadmill work as well as walking outside? 
Brenda would like to know because she's not safe walking alone outside. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You can still get up to that high intense level. You can still get your heart rate up and you can still do the things that I just mentioned before where you can try and do some other, some other things um, while you're walking on the treadmill that can really challenge you. But yeah, great question. Okay, those are all the questions for the chat box. Now, do we have any questions, um, live questions from our audience? I'm trying to scroll side to side to see. I have three pages, so let me get to <laughs> yeah, I apologize. I'll help you look through. I don't see any, Ari, do you? No, no. Oh, wait, one. Oh, Roseanne. Roseanne Adams. Yeah. Roseanne, please unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm just wondering, I've got, um, I'm, I'm suffering from sciatica right now. And um, so it's really painful. And I'm wondering, um, some doctors have told me that to exercise, some say don't exercise. So, but I don't feel like I, I feel like I should be exercising, but I don't know what to do. Yeah. Is it more, it depends, I think, on which positions are most painful for you. Um, if you can tolerate sitting, then maybe do some, doing some sitting exercises would be a better option for right now until the sciatica calms down and then kind of easing back into more standing or, uh, you know, walking positions would be best. Yeah. I'm going for an MRI on Tuesday, so I'll find out if I have something really bad going on. <laughs> well, good luck. I hope that it's not. Thank you. And yeah. I enjoyed your, your, your class. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, one thing, one topic you didn't cover, and I um, apologize for throwing this at you late in the game. Do you recommend any post-exercise, um, tennis balls, towels, stretching, anything we can do to help the muscle feel better and recover? Mm -hmm. um, are there any tips and tricks you could share with us for those of us who are mobile and those of us who have mobility-related issues so that we can reduce the soreness? Um, yes, I think all of those things are good options. Um, tennis ball rolling, foam roll rolling, any of those things would be helpful. Stretching, like doing a dynamic stretch or a passive stretch at the end can always be really helpful. Um, and also like alternating sometimes, like the type of exercise you're doing can be helpful. Like if you're going to do lower body resistance training, then maybe alternate it with upper body the next day and so forth, or aerobic, right? Trying to alternate the different types of exercise can also be helpful, I think, in the recovery process and reducing any of this, the soreness that you might feel. Yeah, great question. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Um, this was really educational and informative. I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you all for joining us for today's Let's Talk Parkinson's event. Stay tuned for email, in, in email, inbox of our upcoming events. Also, if you notice on the screen, I wanna take a moment to highlight and invite you all to join us in April for our Living Artistically with Parkinson's, which is a month long celebration of creativity and arts. We will have an online exhibition and sale of artwork by artists from the Parkinson's community. We also have some special interactive virtual events you can join from your home. In addition to that, we have a silent auction fundraiser with some really exciting prizes. And as you all know, the silent auctions and fundraisers are one of the major ways that PCLA can continue to receive support from the community to grow our programming, find great speakers like Ari and support the community throughout the year. Stay tuned for more information on that. However, if you are here today and you are an artist, we would love to have you participate in our exhibition and sale. Please let us know. You can reach us at Living Artistically two L's at the end, at pcla.org. Um, today's Let's Talk Parkinson's is brought to you by our sponsors, Abbott, AbbVie, Boston Scientific, US World Meds, Medtronic, and most importantly, by all of you. Um, please keep in mind that by donating, you can join us in our mission to improve the lives of the members of our community who are living with Parkinson's disease, their care partners and families. PCLA is a nonprofit and all donations are tax deductible. If you enjoyed today's Let's Talk Parkinson, please consider making a donation to the best of your ability to help us continue our work. As always, you can reach us through our website, 
our email address, which is info at pcla.org, or by phone at 310-880-3143. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe, stay well, and have a great week. And a big round of applause to Amy, who made a wonderful presentation today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Amy.